How's it going you guys? It's Scott with Everyday Solar and today I want to test out some bifacial panels here on this flat white membrane roof. Now I've been wanting to get panels up here for some time but a big question I had was are bifacials actually worth it? Is there much to gain by harvesting any sun that's reflecting off that white membrane roof and then harvested through the backside of the bifacial panels? So I teamed up with Shop Solar and they sent me over four of these Trina 395 watt bifacial panels. So I separated those four panels panels out into two different test sets. Each set has two panels wired in series. One has nothing done to it, and then one has kind of the bifacial feature taken off. So let me show you how I'm approaching that. Pretty simple for two of the panels that I'm going to wire in series that will not have the bifacial feature. I just mask those off with blue painter's tape. Then once I had those completed, I just took the panels up and if you're bringing those up by yourself, be careful. If it's windy outside, remember, these things are like sails. Best case scenario, it'll toss the panel. Worst case scenario, it'll toss you and the panel off the ladder. Now let me know down in the comments if these type of systems are anything you would ever take on or if you're just exploring solar. Specifically for me, I love these DIY projects, but when it came to getting 11 kilowatts of panels put on my own home and tied into the grid, that is something I did hire out. And I started off by just getting an estimate on the size and cost. And you can see the link in the description, which is exactly where I started off. You give your monthly power bill, a few different characteristics on your home and the setup. And then within a few minutes, you can get that dashboard with the estimate on size of system you're looking at to offset your monthly power bill and what is the estimated cost. And then if you want to dive deeper, they can connect you with local installers where you can get actual quotes and then look at the reviews and feedback on those specific installers. So let's go ahead and jump back in, finish up our setup and start the test. Then I took this 12 foot long four x four post and this is just a temporary mount, but it's gonna work for the testing today. Taking some snap and wrap top speed mounts. These are the same mounts I used on that asphalt shingle roof you see in the background. Don't have to have any rail system, just two per panel. And the interesting thing about these designs is it has four lags, which has more holes through your roof if you use them for your roof, but it does not have to hit a truss. It doesn't have to sink, you know, two and a half inches into a truss. It just goes through your decking and then that gives enough hold to, to hold everything down and actually stand up to any of the wind requirements in your area. So tightening those up, I'll start to set them on each of the mounts and then rotate it a bit securing down the clamps on the top side. Again, I'm not grounding the system. I'm not putting ballast on the system. Completely temporary. Do not use this as like a permanent solution. And then I'll put a couple more 4x4 posts underneath, and then that should get me to where I need to be. I'll just use my little bubble level here on my iPhone and match that up, and it does match my 10 degree angle. Then I'll take my 100 foot long of 10 gauge and this is the solar cables, and I'll do that for each of the two sides. Remember, the one closest to you is the set that has bifacial. We'll see what gains we get from that. And then the set farthest away from you has tape on the backside, and we shouldn't be getting anything back through that tape. And then I'll just pass those into the basement here, marking the one side with the tape that has tape also on the panels. So now these will be landing at two different Delta Pros. We'll have the taped version, two panels in series coming over to this side. Both of these guys are at 14% battery. And we're not just going to measure how much percentage battery increase do we get, but I actually have these small energy monitors. I'll give you a little closer look at as we start testing, and this is what will give us our voltage, our amperage, what wattage at any given time are we producing, and then very specifically, how many watt hours have we created over the test, and that's how we'll compare the apples to apples. That will be the full bifacial on this side, and then these kind of restricted in terms of blocking off that back on this side. So we'll go ahead and hook these guys up and kick off our test. And then to give you an example of what reads out on these energy monitors, upper left-hand corner is the real-time amps, upper right-hand corner is real-time voltage, lower right-hand corner is real-time power, and then a scrolling parameters, amp hours here, and then the watt hours throughout the test cycle. And then I did take a time lapse of the sky throughout the test cycle. It was mostly sunny at the start. Then we started to have a little bit more clouds moving in as we progressed through the test cycle. 
So we continue to run the test for about an hour and a half, and those clouds have now moved our overall output out of each set well below 100 watts. So we'll compare the results here to see what the impact was. For the taped size, we have 536 total watt hours. And then for the side with the bifacial active, we have 558 watt hours. So if we take that 22 watt hours and compare it to our lower side, that's right at about a 4% gain from the bifacial feature. So if that masking tape was able to completely knock out that bifacial feature by covering it up, that 4% should be what we're actually getting from the backside of the set that has no changes to it. 4% is a little under what I was hoping. Actually, I was hoping for more like seven to 10%, but possibly because we did not have perfect sun all day long, that did kind of lessen the overall impact of the bifacial feature. Let me know what you guys think. You can reference a link in the description to the exact panels that we're using. I know some brands will kind of tout a 15, 20, or even above 20% increase with the bifacial feature, but I think that is absolutely ideal condition on very large ground mounted systems, possibly actually tracking the sun, kind of all these different scenarios. So this specific scenario on this flat white membrane roof, 4% is what we're seeing on this one day where we ran for an hour and a half. I think next up for me would probably try these panels out on a ground mount to see if we can get above that 4%. Now, if you wanna see a perfect DIY ground mount that could fit these four panels, check out this video right here. It is an EG4 aluminum ground mount system. And for the cost, I think it's one of the best ones you can get out there and might fit one of your future projects. So thanks for joining me on this video and we'll catch you on that next one. Take care.